How's it going everybody? David Hedge here, House Hedge Gaming, and today I wanted to go over what Cindy and I will be looking into at Gen Con 2022, which as of the filming of this video is about 20 days away from the opening ceremonies of Gen Con in Indianapolis, Indiana, August 4th through the 7th. And Cindy and I are taking two different approaches this year. Cindy is more of the crafts part of Gen Con while I am doing more demos and a little bit more live action role play. So uh, I want to share with you guys what we have uh, that's going on, her schedule, what the uh, events she's doing, and my schedule, which by the way, she's doing a lot more stuff in the daytime. I'm doing a lot of stuff at nighttime. So let's go over what we're doing and then we'll go over some of the games we're looking forward to playing while we're at Gen Con this year. All right, first things first, 9 a.m. on Thursday morning, Cindy and I, along with Sorrel and Wesley, will be checking out the opening ceremonies, which will be part of the uh, the kickoff for the entire weekend, if you will. Wednesday, they have the trade day for all the uh, exhibitors and retailers. Thursday, 9 a.m. is the official kickoff for Gen Con uh, for the attendees. At the opening ceremonies, there'll be a mini concert from Nerdy. There'll be guests that'll be previewing uh, games throughout the weekend. Uh, there's also going to be the charity die roll itself, which basically they take two gigantic D6s, throw them off the stage, see what number comes up. They'll times that by 100, and they'll donate that to charity. Uh, this year, it's the Patty Shoe Foundation, which helps feed kids in need. Uh, if you want to check out that uh, and possibly make a donation yourself, you can check out the link below. And trust me, it'll give you that warm, fuzzy feeling inside that uh, you're, doing, you're doing something good for kids. You're doing something good for the community in Indianapolis, Indiana. And I know I'll be definitely making my donation, uh, whether it be through Card Holla or the charity auction later on the weekend. Uh, but that's a different part of the video. So right now, Thursday, opening ceremonies. Uh, after that, 10 o'clock shows up. Exhibit Hall opens up. We're going to check it out a little bit. But then Cindy and I split. Cindy and I go our separate ways from that point forward. Uh, her first event, which I got my little paper here. I'm high tech, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so she has a uh, paracording shield and portal bracelets. Uh, I can't wait to see what she does with this stuff because it's going to be a lot of different uh, skills that she's going to be learning through this. And she wants to do more with it and be able to make gifts for people and all. So she has that. And then also she's going to be doing an intro to painting miniatures because with all the games that we have, we got a lot of minis. Oh Lord, we got a lot of minis. And since she's wanting to paint those, she's going to get a little more technique with it. We did a little preview or a little smaller class a few years back on the field of Lucas Oil Stadium. It was like a 30 minute tutorial. This one's almost two hours long. So she'll be going more in depth with the shading and the color combinations and everything like that. So, um, and she's going to have a blast with it. And hopefully, uh, she'll be able to go through the minis that we have and then I'll get whatever minis that she wants to keep painting and we'll have fun, uh, have fun with it, have fun with it. Uh, by the way, you're going to keep seeing like a little bit of light coming through because of my door over there. Uh, just give you that heads up a little behind the curtain, if you will. Uh, see, I'm so professional. Uh, Thursday night, we're going to wrap it up with the Avatar, the last airbender Fire Nation Rising demo from the op. Uh, it's a game that Sorrel and Wesley, uh, informed us about, uh, because they are really into the Avatar last airbender anime and the manga and everything that's associated with it. There's an RPG coming out for it that they backed and they're going to be doing uh, gameplays for that throughout the entire weekend. But the op is offering uh, Avatar, uh, Avatar Last Airbender Fire Nation Rising. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Rising series of games of the op pits the heroes against a major villain. So, for example, the first one that came out was Thanos Rising, the Avengers endgame uh, themed board game where you took on one of the roles of the Avengers. You had your base that you operate out of. You save your friends, defeat minions, but more importantly, you have to try to evade uh, Thanos and stop him from collecting all of the Infinity Stones. Uh, from there, they have done it for Harry Potter, uh, Potter with Lord Voldemort. Uh, they have also done a SpongeBob version with Plankton. They have done the Batman Who Laughs for Dark Knight's Metal. And now they're doing this one. So I think that's the fifth one. 
that they have. I could be wrong if I'm missing one. The op, I'm sorry. I will definitely catch it on the next side. Or you'll see a little tag right here, right now, saying, hey, um, I goofed and I missed one. So expect to see that there in a second. Uh, but I'm really interested to see how this one's going to play out because each version of Rising is a different one. Uh, so for Thanos, you're collecting Infinity Stones. For Plankton, you're trying to find out the secret to the Krabby Patty. Uh, for this one coming up with uh, Fire Nation Rising, it's split into two separate uh, phases of the game. First phase, the heroes are trying to amount as much energy and as much uh, influence and power that they can while the Fire Nation is doing the exact same thing. Uh, once a, a certain team gets to a point on a track of power, then the second phase begins and the Day of the Red Sun starts. If the heroes are in the lead, then they're going to have a lot easier time facing the Fire Nation. But if the Fire Nation is in the lead, uh, it's going to be a lot tougher on the heroes. So we'll see what happens with us when we go into that demo on Thursday night. Uh, so that'll be when we uh, come back together and play in that demo. And then Thursday night, I go into True Dungeon, which I believe is my Ebony Bay. Yes. Uh, so I have True Dungeon, Ebony Bay, which is the pirate-themed uh, event, which, to be honest, I am looking forward to it. It is going to be massive. I've seen some of the set pieces that they've already been put together. They're showing little teasers and little uh, snippets of uh, what to expect. And I'm going on a limb right now, or I guess on a plank since it's pirate-themed. Uh, I'm facing a Kraken. It has to be a Kraken. Uh, and if that's the case, I will be a giddy as a schoolgirl after I leave because, like, It'll be the first day of Gen Con, wrapping up the day. And what better way to wrap it up than to face a crack and face to face and most likely get killed. But you know what? I'll have fun doing it on a pirate ship. Yar. Uh, <laughs> but it's going to be a lot of fun. True Dungeon definitely knows what they're doing. Uh, it's funny to see how they went from a small group of like like seven to ten friends giving people experience uh, a little bit more out of the norm than a usual D&D &D game. And it's turned into some of the most epic set pieces that you can see. And there's videos of past ones here on YouTube. Definitely check them out. Uh, I watch them and I get to see all the behind the scenes stuff, which is amazing to me. And hopefully one day I might be able to be involved with True Dungeon. I'd love to be a DM for it or be a monster in, the, uh, in a costume and everything. I could be a good blob. Maybe X-Men. It could be D&D. &D. Doesn't matter. I could be a blob. Uh, but we'll uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, but that's Thursday. You'll note that I have nothing Thursday day that I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to try and keep it loose and try and check out as many different games as I can in the exhibit hall. And possibly get in a couple of games of Magic Commander, which I will need your guys' help uh, in another video. Uh, help me figure out which decks to take with me to Gen Con. Uh, so after Thursday, we go into Friday. After a partial night's rest for me, Cindy and them will be fresh, ready to go. Uh, Friday for Cindy, uh, she's got crocheting mandalas and she will be doing hand sew dice trays. Uh, so she'll be do learning some sewing, uh, she'll be doing some crocheting, which she does crochet already, but being able to add another technique to that just builds on to her crochet repertoire. Uh, I'm learning big words. Uh, for me on Friday, the one thing I have is, actually I got two things on Friday. Hey, I discovered something. Uh, Dice Hunters of Therian, which is another game from Richard Garfield that is going to be really interesting to find out uh, what that game is all about. And all these games I'm mentioning, uh, you will either see videos right now of the images of the games, or you will ha I'll have the links below so you can check out all the games I mentioned and see what there is to see about them currently available online. But I have that, and I also have... Disney Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances, which is based off of a mobile game and where you take on teams of Disney villains and heroes fighting against each other. Uh, so it's a bit like a, a battlefield type game, uh, last person standing wins. And it's with Disney characters. They got uh, they got Dr. Facilier in there. They have, uh, you have the genie, you have... Uh, Lion King, Mufasa, you got all these different characters to choose from. And it's one of those things that I really enjoy about Disney and gaming getting together, being able to step into the shoes of famous uh, heroes and villains. Like, you wouldn't villainous. Uh, I love that game to death because you get to step into the roles of 
Scar and uh, Professor Facilier and Hades and all and try to complete their nefarious goals throughout the game. Uh, Friday night, I have the Weird Magic uh, True Dungeon. Don't know too much about that one. I'm trying to keep that, like, at least a little bit of surprise for me on that one. Uh, but I think that one uh, may involve, like, wizards and all. So I don't know which character I'll be in that yet. Uh, but either way, it's going to be a blast. And, well, I mean, it's definitely going to be a blast. You got magic involved, so there's going to be some sort of spells going on, right? With fireballs and stuff. There's got to be explosions. Uh, but that's what I got going on Friday. Uh, Saturday. Alright. So, Saturday is a little bit of a lighter day. Cindy and I get to hang around for a bit by, uh, with each other until about, like, 1230. So, we get to check out the exhibit hall and everything. Uh, so she's going to be doing a Tree of Life pendant, uh, which is going to be cool. Uh, I can't wait to see that. She's very excited about that one. And then I will be playing Hero Quest. Hero Quest was a game that it just got re-released by Hasbro a few months ago. And it was kickstarted through their uh, Hasbro Pulse program. They have all these different uh, uh, expansions and everything. But Hero Quest is near and dear to me because that's one of those games. When I was growing up, they had it. Uh, one person was the, the evil. Everybody else was trying to fight against them. And it wasn't too flashy. You had the cards and, uh, like, not black and white, like brownish and white a little bit, or brownish and black. And it was something we, were, uh, we would do at chess tournaments. And we would play the game for like 15, 20 minutes at a time. We go play our chess matches, come back, do it again. I'm a nerd. Uh, but we would do that, and then we would write down what was left over if we didn't complete the game, and then pick it up at the next event. So it was basically our way of doing D&D &D without actually having D&D. &D. Uh, so Hero's Quest is just a game I really want to get back into and learn it and just relive a little bit of the childhood, if you will, and still probably die in a dungeon. But you know what? I'm going to have fun doing it. Uh, Saturday night, Cindy and I will be um, checking out the charity auction and Tova. Uh, they have an auction house and everything set up for Gen Con. It runs from Thursday to Saturday. It all culminates to the charity auction where all the vendors, artists, authors, uh, even uh, exhibitors, and attendees all donate items for charity and you're able to bid on this stuff uh try not like usually in an auction you try to save money and you try to get really good deals this if you pay a little bit extra for a play mat it's all going to charity i'm more than happy with that i will be glad to just pay a decent amount of money for something in that auction i know it's going to charity and i cannot wait to be a part of that and they also do um, bids on other things, too, that happen on Sunday and later on on Saturday, which is Card Holla, for example. They'll have everybody lined up. They'll be pitching coins at Card Holla. Uh, I won't be able to film that. I'll be in a different thing, which I'll tell you about in a second. Uh, and then Sunday, there will be a balloon artist who will be working the entire weekend to make a gigantic balloon monster. And then they're going to auction off who gets to beat the beast, uh, destroy the monster, and save Gen Con 2022 from the air-filled threat. Uh, and it's going to be really cool to see them do that because they'll divide the room in two different sections, and they'll have two kids, uh, cute as a dickens. They'll be waiting there to see who gets to make the first lethal blow against the, the monster. So uh, you'll be seeing a lot of money rain down from the sky because we'll be on the sky bridge and everything. And it'll be a great time to raise money, again, for the charity. And to see just a kid go at a monster with a sword that is covered in citrus juice, which destroys balloons. The balloon monster's most uh, most hated thing in the world is citrus oil, you know? Uh, but then you'll get to see all the kids fight against the monster, which, by the way, they get organized real quick, and that scares me. Uh, and you will see why when I shoot the video. Uh, but that's on Sunday. Saturday night, the last thing we will do is we are going to uh, go to D20 Burlesque. Uh, it's something that Cindy's wanted to do for a long time. I've wanted to do it, and we never had a chance to because of tickets not being available and scheduling and all this year. That was the one thing we wanted to do. We wanted to go to D20 Burlesque, and Cindy will see my face go completely filled uh, red because I'll be seeing 
Uh, I'll probably be seeing a person from Final Fantasy that I like or whatever. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun either way. And I've never done a burlesque show, so it'll be a different experience. And it's going to be nerdy burlesque, so it's right up my alley. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun and we're all going to enjoy it. Sorrel and Wesley is going to be joining us for that as well. And then Sunday, we will wrap everything up and get last minute deals and head on back home. Uh, but that is what we have planned for Gen Con 2022. And of course, there's going to be other games that will come up too as well and that we'll catch. And if I see anything, I'll definitely uh, take some videos of it. Uh, maybe get an interview or two, uh, see how that goes. And if not, then I'll just commentate what I see and um, definitely look it up and research it for later on down the line. All right, last but not least, a few extra games that are coming out for Gen Con 2022 uh, that are not on our schedules, but we're going to go to the booths, check it out. Uh, first and foremost, Funko Games will have Disney, a goofy movie game. Uh, with this one, and you should see the image of it come up right now, uh, Global Superstar Powerline is back on tour. In Disney, a goofy movie game, you join Max and his friends as they race across the United States, play cards to collect fun memories for their scrapbook, and try to score the best seats by the time Powerline hits the stage, assuming Goofy doesn't botch things up and send you on a side quest. Uh, it's going to be... I don't know fully what the gameplay is going to be. It sounds like it's definitely going to be like a cooperative game um, where everybody is working together to get the best seats for Powerline, uh, and then goofy like gorge he's gonna mess things up and it's gonna be a lot of fun to see how that's played out plus they're gonna have the voices of goofy and max there throughout the weekend and they did a uh a special panel with them which has already been sold out or else i would have got into it because the panel they're giving away a game uh each person gets a board game a meet and greet photos and autographs and everything which is a really cool uh, extra bonus for people going to Gen Con this year. Uh, but Funko Games will have that at their booth and we'll definitely check it out. Right. Next game we're looking at is Nightfall from Red Raven Games. Uh, in Thornman Abbey, an ancient order of holy knights watches over a sealed portal to the underworld. The knights must protect the elders, ancient sages who sustain the seal. After decades of peace, the seal is weakened and demons are emerging from the rift. The demons seek to battle past the valiant knights and kill enough of the elders to fully break the seal before morning imbued with the power of the gods only these brave knights stand a chance to protecting the elders and stopping an army of monsters from flooding into the world now this game is pretty much going to be similar to i guess hero quest to where you have the one team being the bad guys being the demons the other team being the knights uh it's, i'm really excited to see what the gameplay is going to be for this and hopefully you guys will join me too, because I've always loved medieval themed games. There's not as many of them out there. And the ones that are out there, really hard to find. Like uh, Camelot, for example, Shadows Over Camelot is just, it's really hard to find. But if you do, you're paying a good pretty penny for it. Uh, but this game looks like it's going to be a lot of fun and I can't wait to try it out. Next game, I don't have a full synopsis for, but it is Final Girl. That's it. No. <laughs> uh, Final Girl is one of those games that I've seen on Kickstarter. And unfortunately, I don't have the people that made it. Uh, actually, I do. I lied. Uh, it's Van Ryder Games. And basically, it's a one-on-one -on -one thing where the... If you're familiar with horror movies, there's always a Final Girl. 100% there's always a Final Girl. Uh, and they're they're the sole survivor, if you will. Uh Prime example of this, Ripley from Aliens. Uh, also, uh, you have Jamie Lee Curtis's character from Halloween uh, as another one. And basically, you take on the role of a final girl going against the big bad. Now, they don't do trademark like Chucky, Freddy Krueger, uh, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers. They don't do that, but they do have different uh, creatures and... Uh, offshoot cousins of those villains and you will get to play through scenarios to see if you can be the true final girl uh, they're going to be set up and I cannot wait to check them out as well uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to see if I can survive as a final girl or if I'm just going to be another victim on the tally marks for one of these monsters all right the last game that I'm going to be looking at and giving you a little bit of an overview for and like I said there's plenty of games that will be coming out at Gen Con I know I'm going to find different uh, games uh, out there so 
bear with me. This is a short list, but there's probably going to be a lot more shown. But for this one, it's a game that was kickstarted on uh, a few months back featuring Marvel Zombies. It is Marvel Zombies Heroes Resistance from Simon Games. Uh, when the zombie plague strikes, not even Earth's mightiest heroes are safe. Marvel Zombies Heroes Resistance is a cooperative board game for one to six players based on the core mechanism of the zombie side game series, bringing nonstop zombie action to a Marvel universe in which some heroes have been infected by an unknown virus that has been transformed them into zombies. In the game, you can control either the Marvel heroes to protect citizens or the Marvel zombies to devour them. Fight the insatiable hunger, or he for heroes never die, they just change. Uh, this one, be honest guys, I never played Zombicide. I know that's weird, uh, but I'm anxious to learn, and it's Marvel Zombies. They have a gigantic Galactus that turns from regular Galactus into zombie Galactus, and I cannot wait to see how that thing looks in, uh, how that sculpt looks in real life. So it's going to be a lot of fun checking that game out, and hopefully I can help the the Marvel heroes survive uh, the zombie apocalypse. Or then again, I'm a big guy. Zombies might see me as a buffet.